You are watching a video installment of Learn the Tarot Card by Card, an educational series. Four different tarot systems are taught concurrently. The Tarot de Marseille, Rider Waite Smith, Thoth, and the tarot deck I created and drew myself, the Spirit Keepers Tarot, or SKT. All videos are closed captioned for the deaf and hard of hearing communities, those speaking English as a second language, English as a foreign language, or English as an additional language. For the Marseille card meanings, we are working from the Tarot, published in 1888 by McGregor Mathers. We will also be referencing Tarot of the Bohemians by Gerard and Kaus or Papus. For the writer Wade Smith, both the pictorial key by Wade and also the book I wrote, published through North Atlantic Books, Holistic Tarot will be used. For the Thoth Tarot by Alistair Crowley and Lady Frida Harris, Crowley's book of Thoth will be our text. And for the Spirit Keepers Tarot, both the medium white book a free 200 page download and the book of maps are referenced. This video lecture will cover the aces from the minor arcana. Here the numerology of one comes into play, suggesting agency, individuality, autonomy, and unbound potential. Every journey begins with a single step. The aces represent that first single step. There is leadership and initiative here. When you see an ace, think the commencement of an event. On the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, aces correspond with the Sephira Ketor. Thus, the esoteric understanding of the tarot aces is access to the most potent source of divine inspiration and personal power. This is super consciousness. In the Spirit Keeper's Tarot, aces indicate insemination of the divine seed here on fertile, receptive, material earth. When an ace shows up, you are ready to receive and spirit is ready to give. Let's start with the Ace of Baton, or Batons, from the Tarot de Marseille. This is the commencement of an enterprise, creative undertaking, or a course of action predicted to lead to glory. In reverse, it indicates persecution, a physical altercation, a physical fight, vexation, or cruelty. This is bigotry, or spirituality, blocked. The Ace of Wands in the classic Rider Waite Smith deck depicts a divine hand appearing from the skies, wielding a wand with 18 green leaves from the Tree of Life, 18 numerologically symbolic of life. When this card shows up, it might suggest a new career milestone or the start of a new project its innovation, and focused creativity. It might also suggest a nascent masculine energy being birthed. In reverse, when the wand is pointing down and the thumb, too, is pointed downward, we see setbacks or something new being forced upon you, maybe extenuating circumstances that force you on a new path unwillingly. Here, there may be a lack of clarity and also uncertainty. Crowley notes that the four aces represent the roots of the four elements, and here the ace of wands is the root of the power of fire. Fire. What does the element fire manifest? Passion, creativity, the power of the creator. This is the work you're destined for finally being realized. This is your identity. Geographically, Crowley corresponds the ace of wands with East Asia. In terms of the card imagery, note the formation of the fiery wand, reminiscent of the Tree of Life. In the Spirit Keeper's Tarot, the Ace of Wands is renamed to the Ace of Scepters, nucleic seeds of the sacred fire. This is your awakening to your higher purpose, realizing the roadmap to achievement. This is the divine spark that ignites your audacity and courage to take creative, innovative risks. Now let's move on to the Ace of Cups in the Tarot de Marseille. This card indicates the commencement of a romantic relationship or seeds of love and happiness being planted. It might also foretell a feast or banquet. It might also prognosticate that further spiritual instruction from the divine is soon to come, so stay tuned to signs and omens. In reverse, the card can indicate a lack of consistency, a sudden change to come that throws a wrench in your plans. A period of uncertainty may be ahead, or the Ace of Cups in reverse might foretell that something quite unusual is coming your way. 
In the Rider-Waite's myth, the Ace of Cups can suggest overflowing love, beauty, or good health, signifying abundance and prosperity. A period of peace and harmony is coming. In contrast to the Ace of Wands earlier, here the Ace of Cups can suggest nascent feminine energy being born. In reverse, we see superficiality, seeking happiness in all the wrong places. The Ace of Cups reversed might suggest unstable or unfulfilled desires. This is the heart that does not know what it wants and is therefore directing flow of life and personal energy in errant directions. A spiritual rectification is needed. This is the root of the power of water. In the Thoth Tarot, the Ace of Cups corresponds with the Pacific. The root of the element water will bring healing. The psychic spirit has now been activated. When the Ace of Cups appears, it is a validation and an affirmation that your intuition is right on. This is the cup of life, an omen of spiritual growth to come. Here, note the triquetra for the Holy Trinity in the form of an endless knot appearing on the chalice. You'll see the key symbols here in Crowley's Ace of Cups, reimagined in the tarot deck I illustrated. In the Spirit Keeper's Tarot, the Ace of Cups is renamed to the Ace of Chalices. This is the consecration card that begets holy water. This is soul purification. And in everyday terms, this is when you fall in love, when you realize love, when you are filled with calm and serenity. When the Ace of Chalices appears, see the presence of the Holy Ghost. Past hurt is washed away and the soul is reborn. Here you will also see the channeling of the Holy Trinity and the Triple Goddess. In the Ace of Swords from the Marseille deck, we see the commencement of an enterprise, a creative undertaking or course of action that is predicted to lead you to glory, the commencement of a struggle or conflict. An adversary, hostile force, or obstacle is soon to come, but your victory is predicted. The Ace of Swords can also indicate prosperity and virility or fertility. In reverse, the Ace of Swords might suggest knowledge or power being wasted, left unused, untapped potential in a negligent or destructive, improvident way. We see an adversary, hostile force or obstacle that is soon to come, but here victory is uncertain. Incorporating all that we said about the Ace of Swords so far, the Rider Waite dovetails on all that with indications of a newborn champion, suggesting perhaps an intellectual conquest, the rise of a new leader, or the archetype of the warrior king present. In reverse, with the blade pointing down and the crown in reverse, we see destructive decision making or decisions that lead to social decline. K and the sign of greatness squandered. In short, upright, the Ace of Swords is victory, the Ace of Swords in reverse is failure, or at its minimal effects, victory delayed until rectification measures are implemented. In Crowley's Thoth deck, the Ace of Swords is the root of the power of air. This ace and the element air, according to Crowley's Book of Thoth, corresponds with the Americas, the West. The Ace of Swords is courage, ambition, idealism, and directing ideologies outward. This is the power of advocacy and taking up the sword to fight the good fight. Notice the two sides of the green blade. To its left, we see white curvatures, or a natural phenomenon called sky glow, or diffused luminescence in a night sky. This is zodiacal light, or it could even be light flares. To the right, we see twinkling but fixed starlight. How would you interpret this? Well, here's how I interpret it when working with the Thoth. In a tarot spread, cards next to the left side of the Ace of Swords will suggest actions to be taken, movement and activity of the root of the power of air. Cards to the right side of the Ace of Swords will suggest destiny, what's pre-written in the stars or fate. But you will need to decide for yourself how you will interpret these symbolic details. 
One more thing, let's take a look at the blade on the green sword. We see Greek letters inscribed at the base of the blade, which spell out thelma, which can be transliterated to thelma, symbolic of the true will, or Crowley's law of thelma. Do as you will. Seek out what it is you most want. Live to fulfill your purpose. The Ace of Swords in SKT foretells that a great challenge will be overcome and victory comes after battle. This is the good fight that you will soon undertake and the sacred cinnabar or red mercury symbolizes the catalyst. Here, take a moment to compare and contrast the aces from the four different tarot decks, which are more similar to each other. What are the symbolic differences, and how would you interpret those differences depending on which deck you're working with? As for reversals in the Thoth and SKT, in either deck, when the Ace of Swords appears in reverse, we see focus scattered, and therefore the blade of will and spirit is misdirected. This is power misgoverned, misapplied, or misused. This is the inefficiency of competence, aptitude, skill, the misdirection of talent. We are now on to the final ace, the Ace of Coins from the Marseille. This is the commencement of trade, or the start of a commercial venture headed for success. We see the development of a business project, or the Ace of Coins can pertain to money matters. The Ace of Coins is generally positive, suggesting material happiness and prosperity. Reversed, the Ace of Coins is still good news. We see money gains, profit earned, and riches manifested. At its worst, there may be delays in the coming of success, but that financial success will come notwithstanding. In the Rider-Waite-Smith, this is the Ace of Pentacles. Incorporating what we said earlier about the Ace of Coins, here there is the indication of investments that yield future gains. Ventures are beget in a fertile environment and therefore lead to success. This is the receiving of assets or opportunities. Something, an advantage, gain, or benefit will be handed to you. In reverse, the Ace of Pentacles may suggest that the gains you receive are fleeting, temporary, and don't last, or perhaps it will suggest that the material prosperity you receive turns out to be unfulfilling. You get what you thought you wanted, but once received, you realize it's not what truly fulfills you. You want more. Also, notice how in the Rider-Waite-Smith tarot deck, the Ace of Pentacles is the only ace that does not depict leaves from the Tree of Life. In the first three aces, wands, cups, and swords, there is a motif of religion, philosophy, mythology, and the spiritual science of knowledge. Sparks of divinity are still present. In the Ace of Pentacles, the genesis of opportunity is earthly-born, material-based, and is tangible, physical, measurable, not spiritual, emotional, or ideological. And here in the Thoth Ace of Discs, we see the root of power of Earth, which Crowley corresponds geographically with Europe and Africa. This is the key of foundations and the body, the material world, the physical and tangible. Note the pine cones depicted on the Ace of Discs. The pine cones and ivy vines here are symbolic of the Thyrsus, which is associated with the Greek god Dionysus or Bacchus. Thus, the Ace of Discs represents prosperity, fertility, and also hedonism, the pursuit of material and physical pleasure. The Thyrsus and the symbolism of the pine cones here are also indicative of sacred ritual and sacred rights. I'd also like to direct your attention to the central disc in the card imagery. Around the rim of the disc, you'll see letters inscribed clockwise in Greek, which translate to to Megatherion, meaning the great beast. This comes out of the biblical book of Revelation in reference to the great beast rising out of the earth. You'll also see in the center of the disc the numbers 666. This seal is self-referential to Crowley, the deck creator himself. 
In Crowley and Lady Frida Harris's Thought Tarot, the four elements that create the material world we live upon are still in spiritual, intangible form. Pictorially, you see the depiction of energy, more notably around the wand cup and the radiating crown above the sword, though the lines formed around the ace of discs suggest pathways of magnetism. Crowley notes in the Book of Thought that the four aces are linked directly to the four princess cards, or tarot pages. In heaven, the princesses are the lower stratosphere closest to the human world, and the aces are the divine seeds they transport from the spiritual realm to the material, physical, worldly realm. The four tarot princesses carry the four spiritual roots that are the four aces. Moving on from the Ace of Coins to the Ace of Pentacles to the Ace of Discs and now in the Spirit Keepers Tarot deck, the Ace of Orbs. This is realization of your greatest power and potential when the divine word represented by the old world writings on the outer cave walls will become flesh that lives among us, glory of grace and truth materialized. And yet this is the phase of the darkening because immediately after this moment, what comes right after will be the waning period, the decay, the withering of full bloom. The darkening is the plunging of the sacred seed deep into the darkness of the earth, the sowing of that sacred seed. Why is the Ace of Orbs titled the Bread of Life? The basic universal bread recipe has four ingredients, a leavening agent like yeast, helping the dough to rise. Note the rising sun behind the sacred fire, water, which is the solvent, oil or a fat like butter which gives bread dough its elasticity and flour the nutritive source a flatbread doesn't even need yeast so you might frame the four ingredients as fire or a heat source to bake the bread water in this case the bread of life is made with holy water oil symbolic of quicksilver mercury or its red form for the philosopher's stone cinnabar and flour in the Spirit Keeper's Tarot, the Ace of Orbs, Bread of Life, is connected psychically and divinely to the Archangel of Mysteries, the King of Orbs. We'll cover the Tarot Kings in a future video lecture. At this time, study how the four aces are depicted in these four tarot deck systems. Compare, note the differences, and note the similarities. Attain a solid level of familiarity with the card imagery. Pause the video if you need more time. And now take a moment to study how the cards look in reverse, your impressions of the aces when they appear in reverse, and how ill-dignified energies in the four aces make you feel. Pause the video if you need more time. Thank you for watching. The next video in this series will cover the Tarot 2s. The fourth deck pictured in this series is my own deck, which I created, designed, illustrated, and wrote all the companion guidebooks to the Spirit Keepers Tarot. What you see pictured is a limited edition, and as of this video recording and posting, we have exactly 111 decks left in stock. Yep, 111. If you want to acquire a copy of this limited edition artisanal holy oil anointed deck for yourself, check out the link to purchase in the video description box. This is a sepia-toned, esoteric-leaning tarot deck that integrates both the Rider-Waite-Smith and Thoth tarot traditions. In addition to the deck and little white book that comes tucked inside the box, you get a 740-page companion guidebook, the Book of Maps, and a free 200-page medium white book digital download for the in-depth card meanings. 
Spirit Keeper's Tarot is a hand-illustrated 78-card tarot deck with two additional versions of Key Zero for a total of 80 cards, inspired by late Renaissance woodcut prints, with symbology based predominantly on medieval European alchemy, Hermeticism, Zoroastrianism, astrology, the Kabbalah, Abrahamic angelology, Egyptian mythology, Sufism, and late Renaissance Christian mysticism. Only 111 decks are left as of this recording, and with your own copy, you will be able to deep dive into the tarot card by card. Alongside this Learn the Tarot video series, where we are going to cover the Tarot de Marseille, Rider Waite Smith, Thoth, and this deck, the Spirit Keepers Tarot.